welcome back to 1001 Beers. You must try before you die. Uh, it's Christmas has just finished. Uh, it's 1st of January today, 2018. And uh, I thought I'd have the Christmas tree in the background here. Uh, so Happy New Year to everyone watching this. Um, <clears throat> I've bought a load of beers online. Uh, and this one is from France. Um, I hope you all had lots of nice Christmas beers, by the way. And didn't get too drunk on New Year's Eve. No, actually, I hope you did get drunk on New Year's Eve. That's the thing, that's the thing. Why is it just this? There we go, a bit of table in. Got the book, the trusty book here. Um, I think you probably, my last three reviews were with Quino in various pubs in Reading. This one is from France, first brewed 1984. Alcohol content, 8.5%. Uh, I've never had it before, never even heard of it before this book. Uh, it is three months. Huge bottle. Uh, I'm not so sure if it comes as a smaller bottle, but 75 centilitres. So it's quite a, a mammoth one. Um, let me talk about the, the design first and the tasting notes. No, actually, tasting notes first, then design, because there's something interesting about the bottle top you can't see there. So it says a blonde stunner with a blast of fruit on the nose, underwritten and kept in line by a hint of grainy cereal. The palate resonates with its rich, ripe fruitiness, almost like a rich white wine, while the finish roars with alcoholic warmth and hints of bitterness. So it's really strong. And look, it's a proper blonde beer. It is officially a beer de garde, which I don't know what it is. Never had one before, but I said it's more like a Belgian triple. So it's basically... The brewer says it's more like a Flemish beer than a French beer. So this is from the French Flanders area, so this is from the north of France. Right, so uh, very traditional design here, although I don't even know what, really what's traditional for France, because I haven't had many French beers. It's very unremarkable. It, it, it's just three months, and they're basically, apparently it's quite funny, because apparently the whole area is quite flat, and it's just three hills. They're not really mountains, apparently. Right. Uh, now, it's got this weird thing at the top here, which is like, just odd. So I'm gonna have to like it's almost like a, like a metal clasp. So I'm gonna have to try and ah here we go, right. This might take a little while. Ah, there we go. So there's this weird kind of metal clasp on the top here, and it's got cork. This is interesting to try and take out. I may well be defeated by this. Let's see. This may well be the first beer I get defeated by. Oh, I might need to get a corkscrew in here. Oh my goodness. Um, I think I am going to have to get a corkscrew in this. One moment. This is a, this is, this, this was a voyage of discovery. Okay. I wasn't quite sure what was actually going to happen here. So I've got a corkscrew. This may well work. It may well go a bit wrong. Let's see what we got. This is on, I haven't had to have many with corkscrews yet, but this one is clearly one that will need a corkscrew on it. It's such an odd way to produce a beer bottle. It's huge. Right. I think it's making like a nice popping noise. Eee, there we go. Like a bottle of bubbly. Awesome. That's quite a hefty cork, actually. Let's just take that out for a minute. It's a hefty old... It's such an odd... Oh, it's written on as well, but it's such an odd contraption to secure the beer. Uh, it's probably pressed down the cork. Can you see that? You see the big marks? That's that's the weirdest beer uh, thing I've seen so far. Anyway, right, so it's not probably fizzed out. That's quite nice. I've had this chilled. Satisfying lugging noise. I really hope it's not bottle condition because it's a huge bottle and I no way I'd have anything big enough to hold it all in. Uh, it's going to have a thick white head. I know it is because it says, it shows in the picture that it does. Uh... There's a touch of yeast at the bottom, but not very much. Um, nice big thick white head here, as it shows in the picture. It's like how it should be. I poured it slowly, but it's properly fizzing away. 
Uh, it's very, very light coloured. Looks like a lager, um, but like a very light lager. Um, let's go for the smell. I can smell almost nothing. Hmm. Oh, I was probably headed up in the bottle as well. That's interesting. If you can see that in there, that's quite funny. Right. Let's try and go for the taste. Cheers. Ooh. Oh, that is strong, but it's really nice. Um, oh, it's quite bitter. Quite pleasant though. It tastes like um, it tastes like a blonde beer, a lager, just like a really strong version of all those things. Um, it's got a huge amount of bitterness to it. Um, I don't know what to say about this one. It's yeah, let me see what it says about it. Hops in the region and barley from the area north of Paris go into the mix. Fermentation takes place over several days and the beer is then guarded for between three to four weeks. Even though the, even though the beer spends a receptible time maturing, when next seen in the glass, the question about what constitutes a beer de garde crops up. Three months is golden in colour and seemingly has more taste than Romans in common Belgian triples than the classic amber malt bombs constitute beer de garde. Okay, I don't know enough about beer de garde. Um, it doesn't t oh, it's really bitter it's got a really strong aftertaste uh, uh, the, the brewery's been around since 1920 right <sighs> okay it's calming down a little bit in flavour now I think the initial hit was quite strong um Go back to the tasting notes. Blonde stunner. Yeah, it is a blonde stunner. I didn't get anything on the nose, although I got this stuff in the block, block nose anyway. Um, it's quite, it says rich ripe fruit, and it's almost like a rich white wine. It is like that, actually. Uh, it says raws with alcohol and warmth and hints of business. Hints of business. The whole thing is really, really bitter. It's, it's nice. I wouldn't. I'm going to struggle to drink this entire bottle, I must admit. Uh, this is a one I'm going to drink. I have to pace myself this evening on, on this one. Um, but what else to say about this one? It's just... It's just, a, it's just a, like a lager that's just got lots of booze in it and lots of bitterness. Probably one of the more interesting French beers I've had so far. I say, if you're a fan of lagers and you want something with a lot of booze in it, go for this beer. Uh, I probably won't have it again. Uh, it's fine. If I was in front, if I was in the region and I saw it and someone said, "Would you like a nice glass for this three months?" I go, "Yes." Uh, and a lovely hot day. That but this would be this would be nice on a hot day, even though it's eight point five percent. It's probably knock your socks off. Um, I'm going to leave it there for your Beer de Flanders, Beer de Côte Station, Beer de Garde, three months. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you for another beer review uh, in the very near future. Goodbye.